hope you're okay, all okay today. Um, it's Lyle from Made by Marley. Today I'm going to be um, attempting, because this isn't something I've tried before, but we'll see if it works out. I have the Made by Marley ginormous um, question mark. It's, I think it looks really nice as a kind of bohemian piece of wall art and you can just hang it up on your wall. Who doesn't want a question mark? You know, it's something a little bit interesting. Add you a little bit of interest to your wall. Now, you could just paint this and that would be the end of it. But what I'm going to attempt to do today is I'm going to attempt to make it look like it's almost old ceramic that's gone a little bit rusty with some turquoise and some verdigris and a bit of copper through it uh, in a paint finish. But before I can do that, I want to cover in it texture. So texture is really good it gives more interest to the piece and it gives it some depth and it makes it look like just not a piece of mdf it makes it look um expensive and it's all in the sort of how you decorate it so what i'm going to do is i've got some a big tub here of plaster paris i've got some of that i've got some pva glue and what i'm going to do is i'm going to mix up a mix of um uh, plaster Paris and PVA glue. I don't have the mix. I'll, I'll let you see me mixing it up and you can kind of get enough idea because I, I haven't done this before. So as I said, I don't know how it's going to work. I'm then going to apply it all over my piece with a palette knife. And I have some IOD stamps. Now, I'm not wanting to stamp the thing and make it look like it's been stamped. I want to just use bits of the stamp to cover the whole thing in some really interesting texture. So um, this is what I'm going to do with the IOD stamps. I've also got some air drying clay because once we've put the plaster on and we've stamped this and it's dried, I'm going to then do the same sort of thing with really thinly rolled out air drying clay and apply different pieces and build up thickness and layers with different texture. So um i'm going to be using the same stamps and i've also got some letter stamps in case maybe i want to put some words in there and air drying clay then we'll once the plaster bottom plaster is dry and we'll glue on our pieces with um the pieces that we stamp in the air dry clay we'll we'll apply that just with um mod podge and we'll get that done We'll let it dry, dry enough that it kind of forms across this, the, the air drying clay won't be completely dry because it takes three, three days for that to dry. So um, it won't be completely dry, but it'll be dry enough that um, we can paint and put our kind of textured finish on top of that. So I'll be mixing up sort of kind of rusty colours, um, mixing up sort of turquoisey greens, and I've got a can of bronze spray paint which i think i might kind of touch up here and there as well um you can see the thought processes as i do this now if you don't have a question mark i'm sure you could try this on a frame an old pot uh, a piece you could cut out one of these with a, a jigsaw you could cut out any shape with a jigsaw you could do a big rusty primitive heart and then you could drill it and put some fairy lights through it and make it light up you could do lots of different things it's just more I, I love the question mark and I'm going to do it for the wall that I've, if you've been watching my other um, videos, I've done, made a set of shelves and this is going to go up behind, not resting on my shelves, but up behind my shelves somewhere. Um, so this is why I'm doing this piece and plus it's really good to kind of like um, try out new things and see if they work, see if they don't work. Now, I'm putting the PVA in it because I think that might stop the plaster flaking back off, but we will... We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. I kind of put plaster and white paint and PVA together um, when I'm kind of mock flocking a Christmas tree and it sticks on the branches to that, no problem. But I'm going to put on, point the camera down and we're going to get on with this. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Scotland. It's I think it's kind of slightly dusted with snow last night, so it's pretty cold outside, but it's nice and light in my studio, so we... Um, I've got plenty of light and I'm sure I'll probably still be doing this when it's dark outside but we're starting now and we'll see how we go. Sorry if the camera angle isn't great, this is the sort of best way that I can kind of show it, show it all um, what I'm doing as I go along so get sleeves rolled up. 
I have an empty plastic cup here and I've got some water. Uh, I buy my plaster of Paris just in big bags and uh, once upon a time it came in this tub and so I just refill it all the time with um, with the bags so I know where it is and I just use uh, like a, a laundry uh, detergent scoop. Now I want it quite thick so I'm going to put in at least one of these scoops so it's about that far up in the cup It'll kind of give you a rough idea and I'm going to mix it with um, a wooden chopstick here which I use for just about everything um, I'm going to mix it up until it's fine and thick and then I'm going to add the PVA Now the plaster of Paris thickens as it dries. Now we're going to have to work quite quickly. So I'm just mixing this up until there's no lumps in it. Get my PVA glue and a good, a good dollop of that. I would say probably not quite half as much, maybe about a quarter again of PV glue until that's been added and it looks it looks like this it's kind of thick cream creamy sort of cake batterish I think that's what you'd say I'm gonna put this chopstick and I'm just gonna wipe my chopstick with an old rag because I don't want that stuck to my chopstick so this is going to be quite messy, so hold on to your... So, you can see what I'm doing. I'm not putting it on massively thick. Now I want to try my best to kind of lose those square sort of wooden edges. And I can do some of that when I put the stamps on with the, the paper clay, but try and get it. I'm going to apply it all over first. Now it doesn't matter if there's thin bits, doesn't matter if there's thick bits. And um, that just give it, will give it more texture when you go. And I think I've probably mixed up just the right sort of amount for this big piece. And then you don't want to start stamping it straight away when it's still as runny as this. You want to kind of wait a minute until it's got a bit of a kind of a sort of almost a kind of skin. It's starting to set. Now, plaster of Paris by itself would already be starting to kind of almost set by now, but because it's got the PVA in it, it's kind of hampering the. Yeah, I think I quite like. I think you can safely see it's all covered, and I'm just going to kind of. I just don't want it to end up sticking to the paper that's on my desk. So just kind of. Now and then just run a bit on the edge just to kind of get rid of that sort of. Once I've stamped it, I'm going to raise it up a slightly so that it doesn't stick to the paper while it's kind of drying. Um, I don't want it on all of the sides, but just just so it kind of feels like there's it's not as square at the edges. Now I don't want to smooth it all smooth like this, but because I want to have it like there's kind of as you can see when I'm smoothing it out, if it starts to move back into shape, so 
if you do here and it's still running then it's not ready to stamp I don't think although I don't know oh, it helps if it doesn't drop down I think so yeah I'm kind of I'm kind of liking that I mean you could paint this let this dry the way it is and let it and make it and paint a kind of old stone like it's made of cement you could do that um, if you don't want to, or you don't have stamps, but you don't have to have IOD stamps, you can use any stamps. So I'm going to switch the camera off, give it a good, probably about five minutes, and then I'll come back and I'll show you me stamping it. So I left this quite a while because it was taking quite a time to dry and set up. What I've done, just a top tip here is if you've got IOD stamps, quite pricey you don't want to ruin them so um, I've got a bowl of hot soapy water here at the side because once I've finished stamping I'm going to put them straight into that because I don't know how bad I don't know what the plaster will be like on them so and and as I said I'm just going to start pushing them in I think it's maybe set up a wee bit too much now you can see what I'm doing I want it to look almost smeared and kind of rustic so I mean that's not I think it's dried up just a little bit too much um, Something like this one. And I'm just really having to work at this. I don't think maybe maybe I've let it dry up just a little bit too much, but it's really the texture that I'm wanting, so I'm not and I'm just using bits off the stencil. So you can kind of see me putting all the texture into it. Um, because remember we're going to put um, the air drying clay on this next but I'm wondering whether I'm wondering whether I've just like some letters in. I'm just whether they might stamp it I'm going to use the glue and I'm wondering whether that will make it work. Ignore the black bits, it's just the black bits coming off my... Really, I think at this stage it really is about how much texture you can put into it. I'm wondering whether... I don't like scoring it really as hands. 
I'm kind of going to stop there. Um, there's my O. I'm trying to think what else you could really put into it to give it. I've got some clay tools here. My scrapes and it doesn't look pretty because it's not really going to do anything until you can. I'm just going to start putting these stamps in the water because I don't really don't want to break my stamps. Um, this is just your back texture, so you know. how it looks see if I can get it up close and get some of the, the texture to show yeah now I'm going to put that over here to dry and then what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to just flip over my paper and I'm going to start rolling out my clay because I think I'd like to put it all together when it's damp so I'll flip it for this like that and the air drying clay, I'm just going to use the same stamps, but I'm just going to give them a quick wash. I'm going to wash these and I'll be back in a minute. So a bit like um, uh, not so much rolling it out. You, you, you want thin bits and you want thick bits because again, and I, and I don't mind these broken edges you know that if you cut it I think it's going to take away it's going to make it too angular so you really want to just be squishing this down with your hands and then ripping it because the ripping bit in the paper clay will give it yet again the texture you're kind of looking for or maybe this maybe you want more smooth and if you want that you know that's I just kind of have a think of I think I've got an idea of what I'm looking for so I'm just getting bits of paper clay and I'm just, I'm ripping it actually into sections and I'm smoothing it down, some thick, some thin. And uh, then we're going to stamp these pieces and give them some texture. No straight no straight edges it's much more organic well for me you can have straight edges if you want let me start with these and all I'm going to do with these is the same sort of principle that I did on the other thing and I'm just going to Can you see that? Can you see the texture? And I love it. So, do it right up to your edges. It doesn't matter if it makes them thin. Um, just find a bit in the stencil and just stencil it and peel it.
any blank bits and you want more stamping just stamp it more I'll try this small one lots of texture around about that one so I'll bring you down the camera down closer once I've done this because I just want you to understand it's not like it's not your life's work, you're just people, you, you, you can work quite quickly, it's just putting it on and if it rips, the clear rips, then that's good. Maybe do this one with the swallow on it because the texture didn't really print into it and it, it's not got enough on it. Look at what I'm doing. I see you just going and watching me do this. But I'm just going to do quite a few pieces and then I'll show you what we're going to do next. As I said, once we, we've got these on the piece, um, the, um, you can paint it, but you're going to have to wait until at least a skin sort of forms on the on the piece, on top, I'm sorry, on top of the paper clay before you can, because if you start brushing it and it's too soft, you'll just brush all the all the texture out of it. So. and broken bits of old moulding you know like in Victorian homes I used to years ago live in a in a in a house that had Victorian um, um, old cornice in it it was beautiful I mean this house is way older I mean this house is I think they think it's about 200 years old. It was originally just one room where it's it's a Bothy's. It was originally a Bothy's cottage for the gilly of the big, big, I live in a country estate. So it was, this is what it originally was. And then as years have gone by, it's been built, bits have been built onto it. But my house isn't, isn't um, huge, but it's, um, it's, it is very old. <laughs> Hence the reason why it's always freezing here. Right, I think I'm just about done. I've kept a little bit of paper clay there just at that side for um, um, for putting maybe some words on it. It's getting quite flaky looking and I was hoping, you know, that I like the flakiness. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get some Mod Podge and a brush. And really this next bit is your own sort of personal kind of almost preference of how you want to um, put it on. 
glue the back. Try and find a bit where your underneath is not lacking in sort of texture. As I said, I left mine a little bit, a wee bit kind of like get it got a little bit too dry. Just make sure you go all out, it'll start to pull up as it dries. edges. Now you get the, the, the kind of like the idea of what I'm going for here. It's just random, you know, you can make it look like it's sort of almost um, kind of almost wrapping around the edges and that gives you a kind of thicker piece at the edges as well. So I'm not, I'm not really overthinking it I'm just applying it and sticking it and then at the end of this if I think it needs any wash we can put some wash on it just make sure you push down all your edges because the edges are the bits that will lift up so you need to make sure they're all adhered Sorry. I'm sure in years to come I'll get better at, at filming and doing YouTube but I keep forgetting I get carried away with what it is I'm doing and I realise that if anybody ever watches these I'll not be able to actually see what I'm doing because I'm away doing something else. This is really going to come into its own when it's time to actually put the paint on it and we're doing ourselves a real favour by um, putting this much texture on it because it really will give us like tone and texture when we paint it. Now I'm still toying, I mean I said in the beginning I thought I'd maybe go with a sort of kind of verdigree but I'm thinking this might actually be quite nice. Um, that might actually be quite nice looking make it look like a little pottery I mean it's limitless really what you choose to do is it not kind of showing me something I'm going to go along at the very end I'm going to get a stamp, stamp and for some of the thicker edges I'm going to stamp on it to kind of take away that sort of rough edge, I mean the fat edge because it's not what I'm looking for. top of that bit. I think I'll put another bit 
and we'll talk and stop here. Just build it up even more. Um, now I've done this really quickly. You're gonna stop and you're gonna really think about it, but you know, I think if you like what you're doing and you're kind of happy with it, we'll forge on. I mean, don't. interesting to see what kind of how it takes the paint and how quickly or how slowly it takes to to dry now words I'm having any and if I am having words what am I gonna have it say why why W Because it is a question mark. Why? Like that. And stamp back out of here. Um, for to just, I think this is a good one for kind of doing your edges. So where it's got a little bit fat, I'm just going to do this and just bounce off that, that edge. then it'll lose its sort of kind of organic shape. Um, right, so where are we going to stick this? Nope. Just going to get that out. So where's that there? I think I'll put another couple of Ys on it. This is a little bit random today. Forms a crust, and then I'll have thought about it. <laughs> what sort of paint finish we're gonna have? Because I really you know, I think it's gonna be nice, and I really want to make the best of what I do. texture we've built into this and that's the edges some bits have got plaster on some haven't and I think it's starting to look really good maybe it would look actually really good painted black and then sponged white I mean the possibilities I think are kind of endless anyway I'll go just now I'll let this dry and we'll be back when it comes time for the paint finish um so it it's it's reasonably dry it's got the surface sort of baked onto it and what i did was i took it outside and i sprayed it first of all with black spray paint and then i sprayed it all with copper spray paint now we're going to make it look like it's got a sort of rare degree on it and the colors i have are a green and a 
I've got a big tub that this is chalk paint and mixed up of any kind of, kind of turquoisey paint that's related to the chalk paint and some water because we're going to put this on with water now I will probably add some full rust to this but we'll we'll start with the turquoise and water water it down so it's really watery so I'm kind of really you know like really watery and then what we're going to do is we're going to start painting it in now as you do this I've got an old cloth here I'm going to kind of dab it so that it doesn't all you know it doesn't all get covered in this and I just I'm going to put some green in it as well but I'm just going to start with this sort of colour some pieces you can make a little bit thicker but you really want it to fall down in the cracks the detail that you put on so I'm trying to find pieces where it's round the edges of where I've put the um, the paper clay because round the edges works better and then I'm just adding water now you can't over saturate this because it's not properly dry so you're gonna kind of have to mop as you go a wee bit more of this blue it's around the edges of this bit I'm going to now put some green on it. And be careful with the green, you only need a tiny little bit and try and blend it into the, the turquoise. Where the more detail is, the the better, the better it will look because it falls into the details. I think I am going to do one a, a sort of rusty finish around the edges just to finish it off to give it that real sort of it really has been hanging about for quite a while I appreciate right now that this is a little bit like watching paint dry um, I'm just trying to give you the best sort of kind of idea how to do it that I can but there's no sort of like kind of there's no rule um, if we just get the turquoise onto it first um, we can then, you know, like add the darker sort of rusty kind of bits around the edges, I think probably because rust, 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 you know, in the edges and you get some that go along the middle and there's no sort of hard and fast rule to it. way I'm going to give you a close-up actually so I'm hoping that you can see that in the light of how it's starting to kind of start to shape up I think the kind of technique is put it on a bit thick and then get your brush and add water like a sort of water color water it down and then kind of wipe it off that's the sort of kind of best sometimes it needs a little bit more just randomly putting some of the other sort of green in it because verdigris isn't always that that turquoisey tealy green it's kind of like got some bits of green in it as well and I'm 
sih semua apa ini gue ya then just pick spots that you want to have the more solid sort of color and just go back over them again that's what i'm doing here i'm just picking certain spots that i think that i want it to be this is kind of lifting up here i'm hoping that it doesn't actually lift when it's and never forget to kind of do some of your edges in the color not all of them but you know you want some dark and some This has been a bit of a labour of love. It's had quite a few things done to it, but um, I think it it's going to look worth it. Just kind of squishing that edge down a wee bit. It's still malleable enough underneath that I can do that. overdo it just just wipe it back there and I think I've got enough of that colour on um, I'm just going to get some black and some of this brownie orange down from my shelf. Um, this is the sort of orangey colour I'm using. It's a burnt sienna. Um, I'm changing my brush from a smooth brush to a rough acrylic brush because I want texture in this. Now, I've been using the same tiny little bit of black that's in the, list, the last list bottle for about a week now. Um, and really, you've seen me do this before. You just, so there's my black. So there's my black, there's my orange, and there's my greens. And what I'm going to do is, I'll try and see if I can get it onto the edge of the camera there, is I'm going to dip in the black. And then dip in the orange. maybe some of the high spots as well Plastic cars to freeze that. If you're putting some on the main piece, you can always wipe some of that back as well.
energies. Just round about where we put the dark, if you kind of go back in with the verde grey again, the green, and then give it a white so it's not all over the place. with that. I like doing paint finishes. Um, I think it adds something. I quite like this sort of some of the bits where that green is. I'm just going to put it on thick here and then wipe it. Maybe this one here. Dab it off. Is to blend it, you can't just have it sitting out there as a big green splodge. Go and grab some cinnamon from the kitchen, I'll be back in a minute. So I'm just going to take some cinnamon. Not all over it, but just some places. I'm just going to add even more texture. On the darky rusty bits. Right, I'm going to bring the camera down and then this really needs to dry incredibly well but I will show you the finish just on on the messy bit of paper until it's dried properly and then we'll get a hanger on it and we'll get it up on the wall. You can see all this in the light I'll kind of try and get down to the edges as well so that you can see the actual the finish. I would just build a load of texture and then spray paint it black, spray paint it copper, just rub liberally, it doesn't need to be perfect. I can see a kind of spot there where it's maybe just a little bit too green, that's it. And then I've just rusted it up at the edges. It's just really to make it look like it is. There's a Y there. Um, just to really make it look like it's it's not new at all. So there you have it. So um, once this is completely dry, I'll get a hanger on it and uh, I think that there looks smashing. Um I'll get a hanger on it and um I'll um 
get some nice pictures of it. So if you like this video and you're interested in paint finishes, upcycles, using craft blanks and just following along with me trying out new things, then feel free to subscribe and if you think that somebody else would find this useful and they're doing something because you could do this effect on just about anything glass metal um wood um then just feel feel the need to share it um and hopefully um i'll get some subscribers shortly thank you for watching bye